Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. My name is Richard Seville, Fantasy65.net. And uh, this is the Fantasy Edge and a little bit of a different show. I'm here by myself. I don't like doing podcasts by myself. I usually like to bounce off stuff from other people. But uh, what's going to have, we're going to have Dennis Sosik on next week. Um, for those of you familiar with the show, uh, Kevin and Jono are kind of more busy in their lives this year. So they won't be able to do uh, the regular podcast. So I'm hoping, hoping that uh, Dennis Sosik, uh, who's also a ranker at Fantasy Pros, will be able to co-host the show on a regular basis. So I'd like to keep the show going. Um, I'm not going to do too much of a recap, but I will talk about the uh, Monday night game that uh, between the uh, Ravens and Raiders. What a game. The Raiders won it in overtime. Uh, I guess you could kind of say they've won it twice in overtime because um, they uh, they reviewed uh, a touchdown and it got called back because uh, it, didn't, um, it didn't cross the goal line. It uh, stopped just short and so... I had to get everybody off the field and everything. And for those who saw the game, know all this. And and uh, they ended up not being able to punch it in. So the overtime continued. But the Raiders ultimately were able to uh, win the game on a touchdown to Zay Jones scoring a touchdown. What a game. Uh, one notable thing about that game, too, is at one point in the game, I don't know what his final. It must have been at least maybe 20 uh, targets, perhaps. But Darren Waller, they announced, I know he's targeted a ton, but... At one point, he was targeted 18 times, according to the uh, um, the, the the crew in the booth uh, on Monday Night Football, and I just I knew it was a lot, but I didn't know it was that much. Um, it could have been been even more because they announced it like I think late in the fourth quarter, and then there was overtime, and I don't know how many times he was targeted after that. You lose count. You lose count. So uh, yeah, um, there is a guy that you might be able to want to pick up um, because they can't keep targeting down. Well, I guess they can. I mean it. Uh, came out successful against a very, you know, the Ravens have a reasonable defensive crew. So, but they managed to win. But um, uh, the running game of the Raiders, not so great. But um, anyway, I was going to tell you about the guy that you can probably pick up, and that's Brian Edwards. So that's one one of the things. I'm just going to take a look at the news uh, since the since the game uh, ended. Um, not much for. Um, not much for uh, Henry Ruggs. It was mostly outside of uh, Darren Waller. You're looking at Brian Edwards or Hunter Redfro. Um, Mark Andrews um, had a had a very quiet night, and he was one of the guys I needed for one of my f- fantasy teams, and uh, he didn't do too good. Um, but uh, Kenyon Drake um, definitely uh, was uh, was quite involved in the offense, especially in the passing game. So that was good. Um, Sammy Watkins might be a guy to pick up for the Ravens. It looks like he, it's kind of scary that uh, he was getting a lot, of, he was taking a lot away the targets that you would kind of think that Mark Andrews might get. So a little bit of worry there, but uh, Sammy Watkins is definitely a guy, if he's available, you might want to pick him up uh, this week. So um, so I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much on, on the uh, Ravens Raiders game, but uh, moving right along to, um, we had a discussion on our uh, chat at F6P League and about Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, like a, I know a lot of you were quite disappointed with Aaron Rodgers. And I, and I really don't think we should worry about it, but we kind of got... We kind of got into deep into his head about the kind of things like what he was thinking about because there was definite frustration of Aaron Rodgers, especially in that that long intercepted pass that was just nowhere near anybody except, you know, a Saints defender uh, near midfield and he just, you know, ran it back. It was just utter frustration by uh, Aaron Rodgers and and you think it was, you know, a terrible game. But he'll return back to Lambeau and and he won't, uh, I don't think he'll go in and disappoint the fans at, at Lambeau. Uh, like that. Um, Aaron Rodgers got carry some pride, and I don't. I, I don't think there was this. I mean, I, I, even I was kind of saying, "Gee, he seems a bit." You know, he seems to be in a bit of a sulk about matters how they've ended up in Green Bay. That he's kind of stuck there for another year, which is, you know, it's been quite public that he's not happy about it. But I really don't think we should worry. Uh, just after one game, and uh, and and the poor offensive show by the by the Packers in that game. Because it wasn't really, uh, it, it really can't be said that he's uh, had his, his head just wasn't in it 
Um, and I think that happened early, but, uh, I think, uh, Aaron Rodgers comes to play. So I don't think there's really any concern there, but, uh, I tell you, the optics aren't great. And, um, and a lot of people were commenting about that. Okay. Let's get into some other news. Now, one of the players that, uh, that kind of shocked everybody before, uh, the Sunday, the early Sunday games began was with San Francisco. And uh, it kind of took everyone by surprise that uh, that Trey uh, Sermon was uh, a healthy scratch, and Elijah Mitchell came in and basically took over the uh, 49ers' backfield. And m- more than that, he uh, worked it almost as the as an RB one, which is kind of unusual in the Shanahan offense. He likes to rotate the backs and and this sort of thing. But it was Elijah Mitchell uh, who. Uh, carry the ball mostly i think it was mostly because of the injury to uh, mostert which uh i can get you the details of that right here that um that uh there um that um that the timetable for uh, mostert to return is uh two months and that's uh that's going to be too long and you can almost it almost makes most uh droppable i mean you could keep him on your if you have an ir spot you could keep him but you know it's uh it's hard to hold on to a guy that long if you if you need bench space uh and, and that's a lot of weeks and especially when they're going to be working in other guys and you don't know how he's going to be um what is the ex- injury exactly it's it's uh it doesn't say exactly what is uh what uh what the injury was but uh it's just just a knee injury that's all that, that's all we have on it so far so um but it's obviously serious enough to keep him out a number of weeks and of course you know knee injuries are not good when you're uh doing fantasy football uh knee injuries tend to they can they, they say they're short and then you know and when you don't get a firm time you know time scales with injuries can be you know they they can range we, we sort of think hamstrings can be overcome but they tend to go on long or short depending on the player so anyways uh yeah that was that was not a good injury and of course there's a number of injuries and and other podcasts have have, have covered these but this is kind of a main one we we kind of like to focus on the fantasy edge we kind of like to focus on the uh guys that uh people are picking up and uh one guy and i think this is kind of important for uh fantasy as well is 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 who is on the uh waiver wire right now who's hot and uh there's but elijah mitchell definitely uh probably tops the list if he's not taken in your league um how much fab do you put on him uh that depends um how much you need the guy I wouldn't put too much on them. Like a lot of people probably might blow them all, especially if they've lost Mostert. They'll probably uh, blow a lot of fab just to get Elijah Mitchell um, or any other of the running backs who uh, who went down this weekend. N- not too many, but uh, you know, it, um, another running back uh, that should be on your list is Kenneth Gainwell. Um, Eleven carries and uh, and he got a score. And uh, if anything happens to uh, Sanders, um, uh, you've, he's going to be uh, a top flight um, uh, producer on the Eagles. So uh, he's definitely a guy uh, that you, you probably should uh, consider uh, picking up. Um, the uh, there's Tony Jones Jr. He's uh, of the of the Saints. Is another guy. Uh, he uh, slips into the uh, role of uh, that Latavius Murray is. So basically, he's just a hand handcuff to uh, Alvin Kamara, but a well-worth guy. If he's available in your league, you should pick him up. He's definitely uh, worth getting. So, uh, Mark Ingram uh, of the of Houston. Now, Houston had a big game. I I don't I don't hold Mark Ingram as, a, as such a great pickup, uh, but uh, he had a great game. I mean, uh, scored a touchdown and uh, and he carried the ball uh, twenty six times. <laughs> so he can't you can't argue with that kind of production. And so um, Mark Ingram definitely uh, definitely somebody to pick up. I mean, if he he's got uh, 
you know, 26 touches is definitely, uh, but, uh, but Houston backfield, mm, you, you, you could be, uh, it, it's, it's not worth blowing a lot of fab on him, but he's definitely somebody that is worthwhile picking up. And I'm sure anybody who's lost Raheem Mostert, who, uh, are unable to get Elijah Mitchell, definitely, uh, you know, consider picking up Mark Ingram. Um, you can't ignore the, uh, you can't ignore the production, uh, 85 yards and a touchdown, but, uh, he had uh, he won he was uh, he was targeted once by Tyrod Taylor but uh, failed to catch the but so uh, just moving right along for uh, other waiver wire uh, considerations and the I mean we could go down the list there's you know uh, there's Carlos Hyde Tevin Coleman uh, Damian Williams maybe if you own um, uh, David Montgomery it might be worthwhile picking up um, Damian Williams in case of an injury to uh, I think at what point I noticed that David Montgomery hurt his finger or something like it goes, I don't know, just, just dinged his finger a little bit and, and he was out for a, a series. And uh, so, you know, little injuries like that, you know, uh, you can get production from a guy, you know, if he's out of game for, we don't know how it's going to be. Uh, in the wide receivers, now everybody's going to be jumping on Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk, um, definitely <laughs> looks like he's back in the uh, saddle again. Um so, um, he's, he is, uh, but he, he, he was only targeted five times, but he, uh, got 70 yards and two touchdowns out of it, and that's, production that's hard to ignore. He's not going to do that every week, but I think, uh, Christian Kirk's definitely a guy that, uh, um, you're going to be looking to get. Uh, Jalen Rager, um, a lot of people giving up on him, but he's, uh, he caught six passes and, uh, he's, uh, and, and all of his targets, he caught them all hundred percent, 49 yards and touchdown for, uh, Jalen Rager. So he did quite well, but he's going to be overshadowed. I mean, he's kind of like for a deeper league perhaps, but <coughs> another guy you should consider picking up is Gabriel Davis. Definitely, uh, of the Bills. He's gonna have better games, so, um, it just seems like Josh Allen likes to target him in the, uh, in the end zone, so, so inside the 20, inside the red zone, he gets good targets, and, uh, He's a favorite of Josh Allen. Another guy you might want to look and pick up is uh, KJ Hamler if he's available. Hamler, uh, because of only because of Jerry Judy being out, I think Hamler will get a bit more uh, extra work. So uh, it's quite possible that Hamler should be um, uh, should be picked up while uh, Jerry Jerry Judy's out. And um, but I, I mean he only caught three passes, but. Um, but that was because most of the game, um, Jerry Judy was in there and, and, and catching passes. So, uh, KJ Hamler of the, of the Broncos, he is definitely a guy that, uh, you can consider picking up this week. I'm, I think he's, I think he's quite well worth. So there's, there's, there's lots of guys to pick up in that, uh, for, uh, uh, to pick up in, in your, in your leagues. Um, other guys to pick up is, uh, I, you know, this guy just, just will not go away. And, uh, Nelson Aguilar <laughs> of, of the page, who's on the Patriots now. And, uh, he gets 72 yards on a touchdown in the season over five of seven targets. I mean, Mac Jones likes him. So, uh, Nelson Aguilar, um, the guy who, uh, spins and turns and somehow gets, uh, I would consider him kind of a sleeper, but, you know, you may need to pick him up, uh, just, just for, uh, just to fill out the roster that uh, got emptied out by the injuries. Uh, who else we got uh, here is, uh, I, you know, um, I see Van Jefferson on the on the on the waiver list, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm of two minds of it because, well, first of all, he was targeted first uh, by um, um, Matthew Stafford, and the first he, the. The first guy he targeted in the game was Van Jefferson. That, that, that made me sit up and dig it. And he was wearing number 12, which was actually a bit confused because I thought that, uh, like, I thought, oh, wait a minute, Robert Woods is number 70. And he's number, Robert Woods is number two now. And so it kind of threw me off a little bit. And, uh, but Van Jefferson getting the first target of the Ram season sort of, eh, sort of makes you kind of think that maybe Van Jefferson will have a, you know, a healthy role in the offense with, uh, Matthew Stafford. I don't know. You can pick him up on spec, um, Van Jefferson, if you think, and just hold him and uh, just wait and see, like, to see if his role is going to be bigger than, uh, because you never know with these guys. Van, Van Jefferson's, you know, he's, he's only in his, uh, I think last year was his, uh, 
it uh, this is this is just his second season so and he was uh, he wasn't well touted i mean he only got 220 yards last season it's so, you know it's hard to see if he's going to going to have an expansive role if he's going to be uh have a bigger role so if you think that if you want to you know speculate that maybe um this is a van jefferson breakout year which is kind of iffy but maybe it is you don't know um you know pick him up uh he's worth he's definitely worth picking up if you think uh, uh van jefferson is uh the future for because because right now it's robert woods right robert woods is their number one but you never know with matthew stafford matthew stafford will go to whoever he likes so he's he's definitely a guy um another guy to pick up to is cedric wilson uh he's still gonna be the number three behind Seagal lamb and uh amari cooper so I, but gallup is out so cedric wilson might have a, a bigger role he's uh, he's going to be a flex at best, but I mean, you're probably going to—he's probably going to sit in your on your bench and collect uh, cobwebs. But um, you might want to keep him on there anyway, just in case. So, so that's uh, pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Um, another guy on the list is Sterling Shepard, but I think he's owned by almost everybody. So there's that. Um, as for tight ends, uh, you know, Gerald Everett of Seattle definitely getting a big role. He, a lot of people would be picking him up. Uh, off the waiver wire, and as well if uh, if Cole Komet is out there, um, he was definitely getting targeted a bunch. Uh, I'll get the exact number uh, that he was uh, seven targets for Cole Komet on the on the Chicago Bears in uh, in a losing effort against the Rams, but you know still looked good and uh, well well worth uh, getting. Um, some of the disappointments and. And I don't know if I mentioned already, but, uh, but, uh, I didn't want to really, really want to dwell on it, but, uh, getting back to, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, again, don't worry about Darren Rodgers. He's going to be fine. Um, oh, uh, another guy, uh, Juwan Johnson, you want to, uh, he's another spec pickup. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that, but, um, don't pick up Tyler Heineke <laughs> unless, unless you're in a two quarterback lead and you're desperate. Um, so he's not really, 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 really worth it, but. Um, definitely guys that uh, are, are guys to pick up. Now, those of you, uh, now just moving right along into, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the rest of season. I do the rest of season rankings at uh, F6P, and you can read my article on, on Thursday of the of the trending, and I tend to be, uh, I'll tell you one thing, I'm, I'm very not very good at short range, like uh, on the weekend. In fact, I did very, very poorly in the in our uh, F6P pick'em. Uh, all the writers were... Uh, like 24 uh, writers and uh, it was just uh, amazing but um i just wanted to i uh, just want to try to mention like what i'm what i'm sort of looking at is uh, for the long term and, and and what i saw this weekend and what i'm seeing is that uh the jets are still the Jets, unfortunately. I don't think Robert Sala is making... I didn't see a big, like, big difference. I mean, I saw the Jets being a little bit more competitive, but Zach Wilson just isn't quite there yet. Um, I think... Um, I think it's going to also another thing on the long term. I, I'm really not in, in as far as San Francisco goes in their quarterback situation. I see uh, looking into my crystal ball. I don't see Garoppolo giving up um, the starter job uh, that quickly. I think you're still going to see Trey Lance uh, working in uh, a little bit. And that'll be the same with the Bears as well, um, with Justin Fields. So it's going to be, I think that's how um, teams are working in these rookie quarterbacks. So um, don't expect, uh, don't expect like, I, well, I think in, with the case of Dalton, I think it'll be a little bit sooner with him. But with Garoppolo, uh, it could be a bit longer because Garoppolo didn't look too bad. Garoppolo, uh, he had that one bad tip that, you know, went for an interception, but otherwise Garoppolo was fairly solid as a quarter as, as a QB. So I don't think there's really too much much uh, worry there. Um, but uh, as far as because uh, this is, I guess you could call this sort of the segment like uh, <laughs> what our segment, which is uh, you know, where's uh, what did we call it? Uh, panic button. Uh, there really isn't. I you know I don't like to. <clears throat> it's not good to hit the panic button on week one, but I think there is kind of a panic button with uh, 
like guy like maybe like Najee Harris. It's a little bit of uh, he didn't the Raiders uh, offensive line just aren't giving uh, a lot of room for uh, Najee Harris's talent to, to take form. Remains to be seen, but I'm a little bit concerned about it. Um, I think there's, uh, I think, I think there's a certain problem. So if you're a Najee Harris uh, owner, mm, maybe, 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 maybe not. But it's, it's not looking. He's not looking solid. Uh, well, I mean, but the whole, but in fact, the whole. Um, they were up against the Bills. The Bills are tough on the run, as we know. So it it could be that. I mean, there's going to be better days for Najee Harris, but uh, mm, he's got to have a better day than what he had. Um, so I think right now uh, that's looking a bit worrying. But uh, other panic button uh, people, I think there's a bit of a panic with uh, with Sony Michelle of the Rams. It, it was all Daryl Henderson uh, throughout that. That game and uh, Henderson. Uh, I mean, Michelle came out there. Of course, uh, Michelle was late coming to the team, uh, so it's because uh, Xavier Jones left. So you know, and uh, Jake Funk was going to move up. And I kind of had a thought that Jake Funk, because Jake Funk had sort of a a good preseason, so I kind of figured. But no, he's uh, looks like Jake Funk is going to uh, remain on special teams for the for the time being. I don't think he'll get any usage, and Sony Michelle didn't get any usage. So uh, anybody who has Sony Michelle, uh, hang on to him. Don't get rid of him. Uh, but uh, it's not to, not time to drop him if you need to drop somebody. I, I would uh, hold off on that for now. So don't uh, don't drop uh, Sony Michelle just yet. Um, uh, as for uh, but um, no other but Ronald Jones. Uh, if you have Ronald Jones, I think there's that fumble really kind of affected him uh, and. Uh, and uh, he only uh, that that Thursday night disaster for him, and he, he was only he was only in there six six uh, times. This is Leonard Fournette's show, and if you own Ronald Jones, you've got to hold on to him for now. But eh, he's definitely if he's on your roster, he's definitely should be on a roster bubble, definitely on the bubble. Um, uh, Zach Jones uh, was now Zach Moss um, was a healthy scratch. Now that if you own Zach Moss, hold on to him. I don't know why Zach Moss, um, but uh, but he was a healthy scratch, and uh, don't know why exactly. But uh, this is not good for Zach Moss owners. You don't like you don't let your players to have healthy scratch, and so he's a bit of a worry in uh, this game it, in fantasy. Sorry, uh, what else we got? Another player that's a bit of a, um, a kind of a panic button, but you've kind of got to leave him be. You can't really drop him just yet. And that's Michael Carter of the Jets. Uh, you're going to have to hold on to him for a few more games. Just, you know, it's best n- for any of these players, except for the ones that are healthy scratches. Well, even if they are healthy scratch, you should just hang on to them. There could be a, a perfectly reasonable explanation of why, but it's not a good look. But uh, um, they didn't work very much of Michael Carter uh, of the Jets very much. So uh, it's a bit nerve wracking. Not great. Um, so uh, so th- that's uh, but, uh, that's uh, my abbreviated uh, podcast for today. Um I hope that uh, well next week we'll have a little, little bit more of a structured show like like you have like we had last year on the Fantasy Edge. But I want to thank you for uh, visiting me with this uh, recap of the week and uh, taking a look at the waiver wire guys. And uh, we'll have Dennis Sosek next week on the Fantasy Edge. Thank you everybody and take care. Enjoy your week.